five and you have to sell five thousand dollars a minute. Oh my goodness. Hi yeah, Forbes. That's <laughs> Hi, baby. How are you? Thank you so much for being here in beautiful Florida. We're up here freezing our butt off with snow in Jersey, by the way. You can come down here. I'm from New York. I got smart. Ah, I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited. I have a million questions for you. I thank you very much for joining me on my platform, Michelle's Conversations That Matter. Oh, boy. <laughs> Um, we're actually redesigning a little bit of the house and jo okay. Joshua, um, you're actually live. You want to turn around and he's putting some, you, they can actually see you. <laughs> Come down and say hi. <laughs> you just, I just stand here. No, don't. Just, right, just tell them who you are real quick oh. so they don't, you're not the Hello, handyman. I'm her other half. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Michelle, I hired him. I heard the show is about mental health and apparently we want our mental health to be improved. Yes. Come hang out at my house. The there you go. There you go. I love well, it. Actually, <laughs> so if you had a handyman who looks like me, <laughs> actually, then the crazy thing is Joshua spent six months in a wheelchair this year. Oh, so wow. we're happy to have him back doing That's anything. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, yes. Yeah, so it's so good to have you. My platform is designed to really talk about all things that has to do with well-being and elevating the conversation about mental health. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but I'm most excited to get to know you and have the audience get to know how amazing you are. I have had... Well, so let me ask you a quick question. How do people find... So we are live. Yeah. How do people find us? What is the link so I can invite some of my amazing family and friends who would love to be part of this right now? Sure. It's on my Facebook page. And, and if you uh, just send them my page, Michelle E. Can, Dickinson. Can you, can you um, put that in the private chat so I can copy and paste and help yes, us out here? Yes, yes, for I sure. I can make magic happen. Uh, you, <laughs> well, you'd be surprised the reach that I have. Oh, I'm not and surprised. <laughs> I'm not either anymore, but I'm going to bring my little iPad over here and do double duty so that your show gets crazy popularity. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we actually do with people. We help elevate everybody so that when you've got a message like this and it's important to be heard, that people are listening. So they're on your Facebook page right now, yes? Yeah, so it's Michelle Dickinson is my page. Hang on, so I only, let's see. Let's go to Facebook here. Let's just help you out because this is, this is the new currency is that people actually helping other people. Thank you. So that's let me amazing. go here. And look at, well, but I'm all about that. Dickinson? Yes. It's yeah, D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N. Trifecta, yes? Yes, that's me. All right. We're not even friends, girlfriend. We have to figure this out. So this video is live now, but I don't actually see it. So it's let there. me turn this page and tell everybody that we're live. I love doing this. Thank you. Um. So I'm going to go, oh, you did, you did Landmark. Good for you. Yes. People don't know what that is. Life changing. And Tony Robbins, you know, he's the male version of you. Yes, he is. But I look better in high heels. Don't tell him that. He gets a very <laughs> I love that they call you the female version of him. He's amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, take him. He is unbelievable. <clears throat> but I do something that nobody else does. And it is different when you are doing it in a dress and high heels. And I have two kids. <clears throat> so I'm a huge, but I have to be very careful today. My little voice, I have what seems you know what to be happened? called, oh, what happened was a radio show, three hours of training, a mastermind and four hours of clubhouse, clubhouse. and Joshua all night long. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was joking. Uh, <laughs> so, um, um, so we're going to talk about mental health. Now, why is that your topic? So this is really important, and especially for, for entrepreneurs, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you. So I care about mental health because, well, I grew up with a mom who had bipolar. I was diagnosed with depression, and then I worked within my Fortune 50 company to shift the culture for more compassion. So, you know, it's, it's a conversation that I think we need to just be having more, more open dialogue about. All right, so I need more energy from you, my girl, because I'll tell you what, guys. Hey, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. We're actually going to be live in Clubhouse, if you don't mind. Um, oh. I've been asked to do an amazing uh, mental health discussion. Michelle is live. She's on Facebook. And her Facebook, if you want to watch how crazy this morning is, I, my voice is a little shot. And I thought, well, if I'm going to talk about anything, I should 
inform everybody at the same time. I think I have clubhouse throat. So Joe, I love that you are here. I cannot wait to see you more and more, but I'm going to make you moderator because I don't know how this is going to go. I just hate to waste the opportunity. And since clubhouse is live and it goes away, um, all the voices are going to come out of my little face, but Michelle, let's do our, let's do our thing right now. Okay. All right. So well, for it. thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us, so Forbes, all the folks on Clubhouse know you, your fan base knows you, but people maybe in my world don't know you. So could you just tell us who you are, where you live, and what you do? Hey, if you don't know me, what rock have you been on? No. I know. Actually, I know. All I no, 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 guys. And for those of you who jumped on my Clubhouse, this, not, this is not going to be interactive uh, for a little while because I'm actually doing a live interview on, on a on live stream here so you can see my face. I just came back from the doctor who said, don't talk. So this is the last time I'm going to talk before my Sunday show. Uh, Sunday, if you guys go to www Forbes Riley Live, I will, I'm the girl in the middle. I'm the meat between the sandwiches of, um, let's see, who do we have? We have Deepak Chopra. We have Les Brown. We have Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup for the Soul. And we have, um, uh, oh yeah, Shark Tank's Damon John. There's only one girl in the middle, and part of what I want to share is how not only did I get there, but how can I uplift a bunch of you guys, because it's it's our time. And our time means um, people who have a th thought in their head that they are special, and no one allowed them that space. I had that for 45 years of my life, and now I'm changing the game. Um, and then the other funny thing is if you are looking at that picture, I do want all of you to notice something that there's only the one in the middle had to try on five different outfits. <laughs> no, but this is crazy. We got thousands of comments. Do I wear the red dress? Am I too sexy in this dress? Did the brown work? And I'm like, this is why women are where we are. And not a joke. It is partly because what we wear, we can't just throw on a pair of khaki pants, a blue blazer, and, and it's okay. Oh, change the color of your tie. For us, it's if you wear a suit, you look like a newscaster. Are you too frumpy? Are you too sexy? Are the heels too high, too low? Yeah. And these, this is a reality that women will always have to deal with. And I will tell you why I love Clubhouse, and I definitely love Clubhouse. No makeup required. No high heels required. It's kind of an interesting leveling factor. So if you guys want to watch the simulcast of this, go to Facebook right now. And we're live on Michelle Dickinson's page. You can actually see my face, which I love, uh, except I did just come back from the doctor. So I'm wearing glasses and don't, I'm no, I have no makeup on right now. You'll never see Forbes Riley like this. All right. So Michelle, <laughs> you've got some questions. Let's go for it, my girl. I do. I do. So first of all, I think it's really important that we mention, and, and we are on Clubhouse, but like what an amazing platform has this been for you and your experience? And, and what, what are some of the results that you're getting from participating in there? Okay, so you asked about who Forbes Riley is, and I feel like I'm doing like a 1-800 commercial right here. <laughs> I am a little girl from Long Island who grew up, by the time I was eight years old, I got hit in the face with a baseball bat. I had a goofy, ugly, broken nose most of my childhood. I had braces for eight years. Who puts an eight-year-old in braces until they're 16? Full railroad braces, and then a tongue crusher, some I talk like this. And I, my mom, God bless her, she was 260 pounds my whole life because we didn't have a lot of money and fast food had just come out. And then, yeah, don't feel sorry for me, my dad had a horrible industrial accident. And he, uh, and he spent six months, uh, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, he, my dad spent three years in the hospital. He had 15 operations. And my entire high school was visiting my dad in a hospital room. Now, a lot of things happened to me that didn't happen to any of you. And, you know, it doesn't make me special, but it does make me different, is that I didn't really have any friends growing up. I was very physically awkward and not and very ugly. And that's okay. I, I, I don't, I look at this going, okay, great. There are a lot of people who grow up completely different and odd, but I finally figured out that what makes me unique today made me really ugly and lonely and sad for a good portion of my life. Okay. And it's important that you guys know that you look and go, oh, wow. I mean, if you look at my fiance, he's beautiful. My kids knock on wood are healthy and amazing, but I'm 60 years old, which is older than most of you, Joe, I'm not sure about you, but most of the rest of us. And all that does is give me a little bit further down the road from you. And one of the cool thing about being down the road is that there's a lot of clues that have been left behind. And I think your job, especially on Clubhouse, now that you have access, literally 
access to celebrities that you've never touched before. And all a celebrity is, is somebody who's figured something out, made some money, got some recognition, and pretty much worked their proverbial ass off. There is nobody that I've ever met, that I've ever met, who was handed celebrity and fame. You can be handed money, right. but I have lots of rich friends who wanted to kill themselves because they didn't know what to do with their lives. I'll tell you what, the greatest part about Clubhouse right now, and I've been on social media, I embraced Facebook when it came out. I have a million and a half fans on one of my pages, but I got hacked for four months. They stole everything. I'm like, wait a second, this is crazy. I wasn't even on Instagram for two years because somebody broke into that as well. And I thought, you know what? I don't even need these platforms. I'm just going to do my, my life. Mm -hmm. And my life has been about promoting healthy fitness products. I've been doing this. And these are the things that nobody noticed because when I was going through my journey, Social media didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So you didn't see that I was the premier host of 192 infomercials with everybody. And by the way, you can go to YouTube. Now, if you're, if you're patient with me, I don't have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube storage cabinet. Oh. If you go back to the very beginning of my several thousand videos in 1978, yeah, I know. None of you were born. Screw you. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I got a good, in 1978, I was 18 years old, and I'm on the $20,000 pyramid with Dick Cavett and Dick Clark and Joanne Worley, and I got myself there because I wanted it. When I was 20 years old, I starred in a, in a feature film called Splatter University, worked on Broadway. I have all kinds of stories. I'm sure some of you have watched the X Games. Well, go to my storage cabinet. And you'll see in 1995, I launched the X Games with Stuart Scott for the first six years. I'm the host of that whole banana. It, it, you have no idea that that was me. Uh, people, right. So people are like, oh, wow, a clubhouse. I'm like, let me tell you something. I have been at the forefront of industries. Mm -hmm. If you go to my storage cabinet, that's what I'm going to start calling it, and type in Forbes Riley and Fit TV, you will watch how before QVC and HSN started, Jake, Body by Jake and I, I sold the first 1,500 fitness and wellness products ever launched on TV. We had our own network, which we sold to Fox for $500 million wow. in 1994. Okay. So yeah. it's sort of like, wait, how come we don't really know you Forbes? Well, <laughs> number one, I was a big fan. Raise your hand if you're like me. I was a big fan of playing small. Mm. And let me tell you something. It's easy to play small because then you don't get your feelings hurt. And when you do, you can crawl back in your hole and nobody notices you. Yeah. Um, and even though I was playing small, I still wanted to be big, sucked right. to be in my head some days. And I just met somebody. Again, I love this platform because everybody is here. Yeah. Um, all my friends from all over, every walk of life that I've ever encountered is on this platform. And it turns out that I know a lot of crazy people. I mean, everybody from major celebrities and film directors, I've done probably 32 films and 50 television series. Well, guess what? I've made some friends along the way. Yeah. Um, but I've also, the other day, Emmanuel Kelly. Emmanuel Kelly, if you go to my storage cabinet, he was on AGT crushing it, singing the song Imagine. He's got 5 million downloads. Mm -hmm. um, this, this platform, this platform, I'm hoping, will save people's lives and their sanity. Yeah. Because for the first time, you can't Photoshop my voice. Yes. You can't Photoshop my integrity, yeah. who yeah. I am and how I show up. Right. That is what I'm considering the big leveler. Yes. And then miracles are happening for me. And I swear to God, I, I think that for me, the universe just put Clubhouse in my path. You know, if you go to my, my YouTube storage cabinet, I gave Kim Kardashian her start on television. Okay. You didn't know that, but you can see the video. Literally type in my name and her name. I had just done an infomercial with her dad, Bruce Jenner. Uh, I went back to the house because Chris, who I kind of knew from Hollywood, mm -hmm. said, hey, can you help my girls? They want to get on television. And this was 15 years ago, just 15 years ago. There's two, and I wish I had this photo somewhere, but there's two little girls bouncing on the bed named Kylie and Kendall. And Kim was a closet organizer who was Paris Hilton's best friend. And you watch the videotape of what I'm showing you, and you will see there's no videotape of Kim. She had just been in magazines, right? And she did an infomercial with me for a steam iron. Wow. Now here's the crazy part. When you watch it, she actually got released from her contract because they didn't like her. We had her for $2,500 a year. I adored her. But you can see when you watch it that that's not really where she's comfortable. She calls me one day and says, hey, uh, Ryan Seacrest, just, uh, we're going to do this reality show. And you know what my reaction was? Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. Call me. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> All right. Sometimes, sometimes I don't get it right. 
Sometimes I don't get it right. I didn't invest in the Chia pet, but who would have? If you go to my I was just going to say, I agree that Clubhouse is a game changer because your authentic self has to show up. You can't you can't fake it. I mean, you can, but people are going to sniff it out. Authenticity is sort of what is leveling up, I think, with Clubhouse. And personally, Forbes, I know for myself, just hearing the voice has helped my mental health. I don't know how, how other people feel, but the connection after being quarantined and being isolated has really just been super helpful for, for people to feel connected, including myself. Well, what happened for me, I totally agree. <clears throat> I actually reached out to the world in July and I started a coaching program on this platform because on Zoom, because I needed to not only reach out, but my fiance. And guys, if you go to my... Um, Leslie, make sure that you mute your mic, please. You got to mute. Um, if you go to my, you want to see something amazing? When I was in my early 20s, I told my mom and dad that I wanted to travel the world. And because I had a vision that when I was 83 years old, I'd be sitting telling the most magnificent stories to, to my kids and grandkids. And I took a backpack and a Walkman. I know most of you don't know what that is. It's like, it's like an iPod that only has the same two songs on it, okay? And I listened to that for six months because I wanted to tell these fantastic stories. And my life has been about writing for myself an amazing journey. Do you know that during that, and I haven't written books about this. I'm going to, that's part of what people are asking me to do now. Mm -hmm. But in, the, in that adventure, <clears throat> I jumped off the back of a moving train in Figuera, Spain, because I'd met a guy who wanted to see the Salvador Dali Museum and escape from the guy he was traveling with who was going to smuggle drugs over the border into France, and he didn't want to do that. I'm like, next thing I know, he and my backpack are off the end of the train. There was no reality cameras watching my life back then. But I am going to tell some of these amazing stories. And my entire life seems to be about great stories. So, wow, Clubhouse is this awesome platform for that. Mm -hmm. So, But I did something crazy. And for all of you listening, because mental health has to do with love. I had a very twisted concept of what love was. I got it from my parents when my parents died. I was a little lost for a long time, got married, had two beautiful babies, and had a, a man that I raised for 12 years of his life get murdered. Okay, he was the best man at my wedding. He was a little boy when I got him. He was 20 years old when he died. And I will tell you, as people are starting to do some research on me, and I just saw somebody sent me the photo, and I, this is really... They sent me the photo of me crying at the murder trial. This is not a movie, guys. This is my life. Yeah. And I looked at the photo, and I, it's a Getty image, actually. And I thought, I for, maybe I didn't want to remember all of that. Right. Well, and so my sense of being love and what that is is kind of, you know, has evolved over the years. If you go to Instagram, and nobody, I haven't even told anybody about this. If you go to Instagram and you type in love story X2, love story times two, just check out those photos. Mm. I'm really proud of that girl in those photos because she figured out something very special. Uh, can you close the door? What she figured out was that at 57, when somebody called me and said, Hey Forbes, I know you're speaking on stages. You've got this hot shit career. Are you married? And I thought, yeah, I've been like married for a couple of decades. I was like, well, we don't see that anywhere. We don't see any love in your work. And I thought, what are you, well, excuse me. There's a lot of love in my work. I love everybody. They love me. And they said, you might want to revisit that. And it was at a moment in my life where I'd gotten kind of cynical. If you've ever been around a narcissist who maybe put you down and you started to believe it? Yeah. And I, I had a moment where I sat with myself and did the work. I called it Forbes Factor back then. And I said, what is it that you want? And I asked this question all the time. What do you want? And then I, I, I little girls inside of me said, well, I, I want to wear a wedding dress and really get married. And then the other side said, that's an, it's so stupid. I mean, I was literally looking at wedding photos thinking, don't those people know what a waste of money that night's going to be? They could have bought a house, invested in a business. Why the hell would you want a dress that nobody cares about? And 10 years later, you're divorced. Wow. That was kind of cynical on my part, wasn't it? And then I took a step back and I said, now knock it off. And I didn't have a mentor for this one. I highly advise getting a mentor. And I often call myself in the third person because I was born with the name Francine. So Forbes Riley is the persona. And I'm like, Forbes Riley, come on. Do you not really ever want to get married again? And I had that moment going, well, I, you know, and then I got kind of sad and I thought, now, wait a second. And then I looked at pictures. I'm a big vision board believer. And I looked at Randy Gerber and Cindy Crawford. 
Now, w- literally, if you Google them, there's all these couple photos. I looked at Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen. There's all these couple photos. I looked at Laird Hamilton and Gabriella Reese. Now, I know all these people because I was really doing my homework on what did a sexy couple look like? What was the mentality? What did... Because I said, I used to go to all of these black, all these black tie and red carpet events all by myself because my ex wouldn't go. Mm-hmm. And I realized I was getting really lonely and really angry. And I said, I want to be a power couple. That's what I want. And I said that. And I looked at all those photos. Well, go to Instagram, guys, right now. And please DM me, love story X2. And you tell me if the photos on that page don't look like the romantic photos on the red carpet that I was dreaming of. That's why I made that little page. I started to get, I met Joshua. I met Joshua because I wanted to. I met Joshua because it was a time when I said, I think I deserve, man, I'm going to make me cry. Oh. But I deserve to be loved. I, I, I want, and then somebody said to me, as I was making my wish list, what if I added, I want someone who looked like he walked off the cover of a romance novel. And I put that at the top of the list. And guys, at 57, I mean, I know I'm kind of cute, but I'm not, you know, I'm 57. Let's get real at that point. But I said I wanted it. And I had a very heart-to-heart talk with the universe. And I put pictures on my board. Mm -hmm. And I put the wedding dress back up there. And I found the most, the simple wedding that I thought, you know, I would like that. I'd like to have sex on my honeymoon. Dig into whatever you want to do on that one. I'd like to, really, the first time around was kind of weird, right? I I want to, no, it was so weird, guys, that I broke my toe. I literally broke my foot two days before my wedding, which might have been the symbol that, you know, but I did it anyway. That represents a lot of people in this world who had a dream, go down a road and go, huh, uh uh-oh, I need to make a left turn and I'm too scared to turn left. Right. Why do you stay in an abusive relationship? Why do you stay with people you don't like? You do. I know that. Yeah. But write this on your little board somewhere. You get what you tolerate. Yeah. And so if I was used to talk like a, a dog that's been beaten, just doesn't know any better that at some point becomes that form of love. And I had to shift the mentality and rewrite my, that part of my story. And then here's the cool part. Y'all need to know. I didn't go to Tinder. I didn't go to a bar. I just had my conversations, my manifesting conversations with the universe. I call Mm -hmm. it, and please laugh. I call it Forbesing it. What have you Forbes lately? There's a word called dream. There's a word called wish. There's a word called manifest, but what is the word when you want something so bad and everybody tells you that you're silly for even wanting it, who are you to think you deserve that? When you get it, when you get the dream that's outside the belief of everyone else but you, we call that Forbesing it. And so I'm doing my fitness product. I have a handheld fitness product I created. I'm in called Spin Gym. I'm in a Las Vegas hotel room. And my videographer, who just passed away last month, I don't even know why that happened, um, said, do you want to meet a two-time Mr. Arnold? I'm like, really? At six o'clock in Las Vegas, this guy's going to come to our hotel room? Two hours later, Joshua Self is standing at the door. And he's beautiful and he's younger. And I don't think anything of it. Ladies, let me tell you something. You know why you want to be in the fitness industry? Because I've had men take their shirts off for me for the last 30 years. That's what we do. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't think anything of it. In fact, I told my daughter, don't you dare date a bodybuilder because that's the only thing that, and this is a limiting belief. The only thing they're interested in is three things, working out food and themselves. There'll be no room for you. So I don't even think about it. We spin him with it. He likes it. It's kind of, you know, he's a big fitness guy. He's like, okay, it's great. I leave. It probably should have ended there. But what I didn't know is that he also had a list of wants. Mm. He wanted to be loved. He wanted to find a woman that was different from all the other people he dated He'd been in several very long relationships, but he hadn't found somebody who believed in him. Mm. And that's crazy. And was special as he says it. And so he started flirting with me on Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, this is this, this young man, this ch- former Chippendale Playboy Centerfold. Oh, this is going to be cute. Okay. <laughs> and I played along, but I didn't take it seriously at all. And, and then I got him on the phone. He has a very sweet, gentle voice. And he seemed to like me. And I'm like, Okay, it's three months later after all of this flirting, and I'm sure some of you have done that, he, he said, hey, I'm going to ride my motorcycle out from Vegas to California because I would like to take you out for real. And I'm like, okay, now I, 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 want, I wish I could film this moment when this man, after four hours on a motorcycle, and I was terrified he was going to get hurt, like he went through the rain, he was like, oh my gosh, he gets to my house wearing black leather because that's what you need on a bike. He's six foot two, 
He is a shredded bodybuilder. He takes, he gets off the bike and it's like the world went. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in a movie. You are a chip and, oh, I swear I had no, no framework. And all I want to do is video. And I don't, but I'm like, I can't be the only one witnessing this. Cause I don't care what we do over the weekend, dude. This is a fantasy. <laughs> but now he gets off the bike. He comes over and he sits down next to me on a, on a bench outside my house. And I had a moment where I was kind of nervous and I'm like, okay, like, what are you doing here? Because I had my friends, my lovely friends say, oh, trust me, he only wants you for your money. And I'm like, you're probably right. That sucks. But thank you for saying that. And he sits down and I'm, you know what he said to me? And guys, this is the honest truth. And he'll tell you the same story. He grabbed my hand and he said, look, he said, I'm not very religious, uh, but something told me that you need me. Mm. Okay. That was four years ago. For those of you who said it wouldn't last. And for those of you who've made fun of us because he is 17 years younger, here's what you mm. don't know. You never, you can't really judge a book by its cover. So Joshua's dad was killed when he was two years old in a horrific accident. And he's got an older brother. They live in a very small town in Ohio. His dad, his dad's brother, married his mom to help raise the boys because it's a very noble, sweet thing to do and raised the boys like his own. He was killed when he was 15, when Joshua was 15 in a car accident. A driver fell asleep one night and ran him right over. Joshua was a football player and a high jump athlete. He scored a winning touchdown the day that he found out that his dad, his second dad died. He, um, he looks one way and people belittle that because he's so beautiful. But inside of him is this little boy who just needed my little girl so we can hold hands. And I'll tell you the most romantic thing that he says to me is he says, I'm really sad that I didn't meet you 20 years ago because I would have loved to take away all the pain in your life. And so I don't know if I'm ever going to tell that story again the same way, but that's, um, that's, what, you call, that's what you call a love story. And that's, I wish that for all of you. You manifested that. I love it. You totally manifested it. So yeah. Yeah. So if I can do that, <clears throat> you guys, yeah. I'll challenge everybody listening right now to dream a little bigger than you imagined. I teach and I coach right now a lot of people. My daughter and I started a company in July. I don't really do this one for the money. I'm still acting <clears throat> and, and doing other things, but <clears throat> we graduated 800 students. Wow. And here's a gift for all of you listening. And <clears throat> thank you for listening so long. I just felt like I had to tell that story. Yes. Um, on Sundays, every Sunday for the last six months, I've been doing a two-hour master class on how to pitch. For you guys, if you're listening, you have two choices. You can pay $19, which is a pitch secrets master class, and I donate that money to my daughter's charity. They take disadvantaged kids on boat rides, or you can come for free, and that would be Ask Forbes Riley. Either mm -hmm. way, I don't really judge you, but I would love you if your voice is not being heard if you don't know how to pitch for what you want, and I think pitching is everything. Guys, I've pitched over two and a half billion dollars worth of products on television. Most of that has been on live home shopping where there's no script. And you want to talk about free falling? How about the fact that you have to sell between three and five thousand dollars a minute? There's no ums, there's no uhs, there's no lack of confidence, there's clarity, communication. And I'll tell you what, you got to get it done. I've been doing it for almost 30 years. That's amazing. And that's why they call you the pitch queen, the queen of pitch. And I have to tell you, you have a room on Clubhouse where you allow people to come into your room and pitch to you. And then you have others in your group who give feedback. And I don't know, you probably have had quite a few people come through that room. I was one of them. I failed horribly. Uh. <laughs> I didn't fail horribly. I learned I learned a ton. I actually pitched and then your team and you gave me feedback and encouraged me to come back. So it's invaluable what you do do because you're helping us get clear that what we have to say needs to be refined if we want it to land over there with the other people. I don't want to be the only one in the world who lives a great life. I don't tell you my story to impress you, but to impress upon you that it's possible. If I can, and I'm literally, I feel this way about pitching. If you could articulate better what's in your head and your heart, you just make money. I've been making money since I was a kid. I, somebody said to me, Forbes, if you had to start all over again, I'm like, I, I do all the time. I'm, I start businesses and do propositions and I make people money. 
this is why I don't own a Rolls Royce. I never will. I, I, I think they're the coolest, like really fun car. I wouldn't do that. You know why? Because all you do when you drive in a Rolls Royce is you make everybody else on the street feel bad about their life. Oh, I can't afford that. I don't know the point. In fact, I had a big TV series come and do a, a TV special on me for E Entertainment. Also on, you can also see that on YouTube. And they were like, well, so you have art collections and car collections. I was driving a Prius at the time, very happily driving a Prius, which I was overjoyed that I could get all the way from Tampa to the Keys with one tank of gas. Not the money, but it was the environment. And I actually ended up borrowing my neighbor's next door Jaguar because they thought that would be more appropriate. I'm like, but you see, that's the problem with, with social media uh, mm -hmm. or television. I, I can afford anything I want. I'm not doing, I like my life. My accountant has always said, you live below your means. I'm like, yeah, 2008 hit and I could still sleep at night because my means are whatever makes me comfortable. It's very Warren Buffetty. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I own things. I own, I built a beautiful television studio for myself. I've got condos. I've got shopping mall. I get it. But I still have clothes that I wore in high school because that's just how I'm wired. Yeah. And I take people on tours sometimes. I have a lot of kids I teach. We went, I'm one in LA. We went to like one of those, I won't name the store because that's not fair. I went to a big department store. Okay. I was wearing a pair of sandals, right? I said, guys, watch this. I picked up a pair of sandals. It was literally a piece of leather with a strap on top. $1,200. I looked at them, say, said, look at my sandals, $12. Here's what I do. I take the other $1,100 and I donate it back to you guys because I don't want to walk on a pair of $1,200 sandals ever, ever. Not even in my lexicon. Why would you possibly do that? The pocketbook that I carry, I, I, I think it's disgusting. I absolutely think it, and I'm kind of publicly saying it. You don't need a $6,000 Birkin bag. What the, f really? <laughs> I don't I don't even see the difference. I, my makeup's going to spill in the bag no matter what, or my phone or whatever. It's a freaking pocketbook. Get over it. Yeah. And I, I like wish that it. more. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to take a real stand for this. You're grounded. What, what's, what's the point? It's so important. Yeah. But if someone explain to me, why does somebody want to want that bag in the first place? Do you need that for your freaking ego? Exactly. Well, then, then do something better with your life. My ego yeah. says that I've got people around the world who say, Forbes, thank you. Thank you for uplifting me. Thank you for spending the time. And I don't really care what kind of pocketbook you carry. Yeah. All right. That's with what you. Said. Ask, me, ask me a question. You're so, you're so Long Island girl. I love it. <laughs> Damn <laughs> straight. So there are two things that you've been saying that I really want to hone in on. The first was you mentioned about playing small. You were playing small. And I know a lot of a lot of us, I mean, I'm going to speak for myself and some people that I know who are just trying to sort of get out of their own way. Like, why do we play small is my first question. And okay, I have one, wait, 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 you know, let's answer the first one. I'll, I, I know why you play small. Okay, if I give you the answer, do something with it. Okay. Here's the thing. Now, this is okay. my personal philosophy that your brain is, and I've done, studied the brain for years, and I won't go into why I know what I know. Your brain is a lot like a computer screen. How do I know this? If I say the word high school, you pull up a file of high school that's got photos, some videos, documents. Oh, it's a file of high school, right? Yes. If I've yes. got a fi family, same thing. You've got photos in your brain. Now, here's the crazy thing. When something bad happens to us, you put that on a file when you put a big bow around it and you put it on the center of your screen. Oh, every, oh, let me tell you what really bad happened to me. That's what we do, right? Yes. Okay, bear with me. I'm also going to tell you, I'm not going to go into depth right now, but that memories aren't real. Oh, uh, what? Memories aren't real. If you've been attacked as a five-year-old, I don't care how horrific it is, it's not happening now but you can remember it or think you remember it. Here's how I know it's not real. You and I can talk about the same thing right now. You tell your family one thing, I tell them it was this, the incident happened, but we both remember it differently. Also, if you remember something at five, you ever talk to a five-year-old? I have twins. Talk to a five-year-old, they think that you could walk to the moon if you wanted and it's made of green cheese and Santa Claus rides it. Yeah, well, if you let your five-year-old, four-year-old drive your car, you're not gonna let them do that, right? Why do you let that memory as a four or five year old drive your life? Yeah. Next, you have a thing in your brain, just like a computer does, called an operating system. It's installed at birth, but you don't really get it kind of going until you're about four years old. So watch how I do this. Um, let's start, Ms. Michelle. What's mm -hmm. your first memory in life? Uh, playing with my, my Barbie doll. Playing with a Barbie doll. Were you in your house? Yes. 
Uh, mom and dad married? Yes. Were you happy? Very. Very happy. And you're about four years old at the time? Yeah. Yeah. See, four years old is exactly the time that you get to install your hard drive. So your first hard drive is that you're happy. Now, I'm going to tell you the fact that you're in mental health is that something probably happened a little tragic from about seven to 15. What might that have been? Uh, my family sort of split up. Because mom and dad were why? Uh, it's a long, complicated story, but I had two cousins that lived with me that were no longer uh, with me. They, they left the home. Okay. I'm going to say, so how old were you when you, and you just, your face just changed to, how old were you when all this happened? Probably about 10 or 11. Okay. So here's what happens. Your hard drive is wired that you are very happy and playing with Barbie dolls. What decision did you make about life during the Barbie doll time? Yeah. That, well, I, I was Come on. at that point. Yep. Yeah. Well, but that life is good. It's easy. It's fun. It's almost perfect because that's what Barbie lives in a perfect world. That yeah. got shattered at 10. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're, do you find yourself as an adult going, I'd like things to get back to amazing and that they're kind of, and you're always trying to put the pieces together. Yeah. Well, say that loud enough. Cause I've got an audience who can't see your face right yes. now. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's exactly. So this is the dissection. This is how easy it yeah. is. So you're always trying to get things back to a perfect world. Um, you can actually, but the problem that you're dealing with why you're frustrated is it's never quite perfect as it was back then. And you're always feeling it's not quite enough. It's not quite right. Why can't I fix it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, how old are you now? 49. <laughs> Yo, babe, you're going to do that at 49. I just turned 60, but I'm going to punch it. Here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> What if I told you that in a little 20 minute little thing, we could fix some of the wiring in your brain? I'm in. Right. I'm not going to do that right now because my throat is, is totally. No, I, we don't need to do that publicly. <laughs> but I, well, well, actually, I did it publicly last night in front of 300 yeah, people. You were telling me. Yeah. my mastermind on Clubhouse, we actually changed a woman's life. I do this all the time. In fact, Love if you guys go to, go to Facebook and you type in Forbes Riley's inner circle, ask that question going Forbes. Uh, you know, Forbes says that she's changed people's lives. Anybody here want to share their story? And you'll have hundreds of people tell you that they no longer focus on the rape, the attack, the molestation. They've actually taken that as fuel now to fire them up to get their mission out to the world. Nice. And that's one of the things that I do. Mm -hmm. See, there's no such thing as a fear of success that's irrelevant. But there right. is... You there is organizing the stuff in your head. I would like to write the book, except that I would get massive. Uh, I don't know what would happen, but I'm not licensed to do what I do. Well, I don't believe in that anyway, but, but I want to write a book because here's my true thought. Okay. I want to write some of these secrets therapists don't want you to know. Freud and Young had their head up their ass, get off the couch and into your life. You give me a half hour. I've taken war vets out of PTSD and I, I'm nothing special, by the way. It's techniques that I learned that are out there, a combination of hypnosis, NLP, and a life of struggling on my part that makes me wildly intuitive. But I will tell you, if you can rewire the way your thought patterns work. So one of my clients, one of my students, every time you'd mention the word father, father's day, dad, she would start to cry. Well, her dad died at five. She was 45. I'm thinking, you're going to go the rest of your life crying over what? And then she said, well, not only did he die, but at 17, I found out that he didn't just die. He killed himself. Okay, I get it. What's the problem? <laughs> I know what the problem is. So what we did was we did this procedure and we rewired the connection because right now, every time she hears the word dad, she gets sad. Yeah. And I got her to rethink the whole thing, to understand that as a war vet, he was in so much pain that he couldn't find a way out. And she, had a, she actually turned around the fact that she'd been mad at him. And she acknowledged that went through what I call a breakthrough. If you ever want to do this called breakthrough with Forbes, this breakthrough process, if you ask Stacy Grant, now here's the, and you can find her, go Google. I mean, everything I'm saying is her name was Stacy Thompson. When I met her, that was her second ex-husband's name. She was going to end up with bad relationship after bad relationship because she never healed the dad thing. When she got through with this exercise where there's a lot of screaming and loving and all of a sudden got to the other side, she looked at me and she said, I want to take my dad's name again and drop all my ex-husbands. And she went from being Stacy Thompson to Stacy Grant. And she's living a very beautiful life. And she'll tell you that that 
that moment with me is what's propelling her forward. I don't know why we're not doing more of this with each other, but these things can get fixed. Yeah. yeah. They get yeah. rewired because it's not real anyway. All the right. things that you think right. of, let's just make happier people. I don't think that we want to. I don't know and what the deal is. We yeah. want to meditate people. Let's meditate. Yeah. 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 And it is the foundation Forbes. Like I, I am really clear that, we can't be effective in what we're out to accomplish in the world if we don't clean that up. Like, I, like I wanted to ask you very tactical questions. Like, how do you? Right, ask me, ask me. All right, good. Well, here's, here's what I do know. Here's what I do know. I'm going to say that you're all different cars. Some of you are race cars. Some of you are kind of pickup trucks. Doesn't matter what kind of car you are. You get the gas. You're going. Oh my God, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I went to this this thing and I'm all inspired. That's the gas in your car. You know what the problem is? Most of you only have one wheel. Well, shit, how fast are you going to go in a hot looking Ferrari, all the gas in the car in a roadmap and one wheel? Go ahead, ask me a question. So what is the biggest mistake people make when they're trying to deliver their pitch? Number one, the biggest mistake they make is exactly what you did. Stop saying the word trying. Number one, if you say the word trying, in my world, I make you get on your knees and do four hands, whatever, and do five push-ups. That word is so debilitating. I'm trying to start a business. I'm trying to figure it out. Stop trying. Just do it. There's so many more words. I'm experimenting. I'm working on it. Stop trying. Number one. Okay. What was the question, girl? Okay. The biggest mistake people make in their pitch. Oh God. The biggest. Yeah. <laughs> How about everyone? Is there's okay. One is they think that they think that I'm speaking. I'm not vegan. I'm communicating. Do you play tennis by the way? No. Well, neither do I, but I think I can. I watched Serena Williams play it forever. I must be a good, I must be a good tennis player because I've watched her so much. Yes. Oh, newsflash. You get on a court, you stink. Doesn't matter how many times you've heard me pitch and do this. You don't know what I know. Here's what you don't know. And it's a list of a hundred things. That's why I teach class. Do you know that nobody, nobody, nobody needs what you've got? Oh no, you need the new, you need the newest makeup. You need this hairbrush. You need this training. Bullshit. Nobody needs anything. People only buy what they want. Mm. And so your job, rather than tell them what they need, is to get them to want what you have. Ooh. That's a completely different game. Yeah. Number two, who are you pitching to? Guys, I'm hearing that you're on Clubhouse right now. Let me tell you something. Do I sound like I'm on a stage? No. I'm talking, I'm whispering into Neek's ear and Leora and Joe and Dez. I'm right in their ears. And they know it. I'm talking right to them. There's only one person ever listening to you. It's you. You're the yes. only person listening to me right now. You have a sensibility. You made a decision. You've got some issues. Get it. Okay. So stop sounding like, Hey, everybody, here's my pitch. Let me tell you what I am up to. That's a billboard. Mm -hmm. The next thing is, do you even know who you're talking to? People come on all the time and they forget that I am Forbes Riley and that I have the ability to put you on an infomercial and make a million dollar product happen for you if I like it. So don't come on there and go, we know Forbes, the, the infomercial industry is a very big industry and it, it has 4.2. Look who you're talking to. So here's another big secret, and I'm going to drop all these fast because I could tell you every secret I know, and it wouldn't make any difference. You know why? Yeah. Until you practice it, until you get on the court like Serena does and put in some hours, you're not right. going to get better. Right. I actually, I have a system for this. And I actually, it's an entire thing that we call Pitch Like a Pro, where it is about relatability factors, springboard stories, assumption, the grid, and the hub. And you don't do those, and you're not going to win. And I know that. I watch people pitch all day long and just fall flat, and they're like, well, but it's, and it's not you. It, you're not a bad person. You don't even have a bad product. Let's forget those two things. You have a sucky pitch. Oh, no one ever thought about that before. And so the assumption is, let me, let me show you how this works. And Michelle, this is how we met. I'm going to ask you the question and do it the way you did it before. Wow. What do you do? Everyone's going to ask you, what do you do? Oh, no. So, Michelle, what do you do? Are we really doing this? <laughs> oh, you got a lot of people watching you. Go for I it. know. And that's why I'm like, are we really doing this? <laughs> Here, okay. Let me, let me try another thing. Pretend you're somebody else. Make up an occupation of one of your friends. Okay. Let's, it's not you now. So what do you do? <laughs> hey, Michelle, nice to meet you. I heard that you're in the pet industry. What do you do? Uh, I groom animals. I provide a service and I groom animals. Great. Now, why did she just say one sentence like that? That's nice and all. You groom animals. Here's a newsflash for you guys. Nobody cares what you do. They care what you can do for them. So I wouldn't so ask me what I do. Uh, what do you do, Forbes? You know, I'm the craziest. I, I was going to be a hairstylist. I love making things gorgeous. And, and I realized I just talk too much to be a hairstylist. So I do it with dogs and cats. But I am the best groomer you've ever seen. Like, oh, I'm seriously, award-winning. 
okay, you want to do business with you or you want to do business with me? Yeah, I got it. I got All it. I do is tell you what I do. But I yeah. infused a touch of a little bit of a relatability factor. Yeah. It depends on what, you know, it's, it's a fascinating game. And here's the other thing. Every time I tell you something, I'm going to tell you something else. It's like a moving target. You know why? You ever watch a baseball pitcher? Yeah. Ever watch a game at all? Does the baseball pitcher pitch the ball exactly the same ever? No. Well, he can't because his arm is tired. The weather is different. The batter has changed. So I don't care what it is you tell me, I'm going to change the pitch. So I know you guys can't see us on Clubhouse. Pick up an item on your desk, Michelle, if you would. Let's make the game of pitching even more fun so you guys get some massive nuggets. So what do you have in your hand? My iPod. It? My iPad. Uh, iPod. You're, you're, Okay, you got 20, you got 20 seconds. She's holding a little pink case with iPods in it. 20 seconds. Pitch it to me. Go. Forbes. Do you like to listen to the music on your on your iPhone? Maybe. Oh, I have the best device so that you can feel like you're experiencing the music. Okay, so, okay, so all right. So watch me change the pitch. Did you guys all hear her pitch? Flash your mics if you heard her pitch. She said, we like to listen to music. And then she started to tell me about it, right? Here's my question to you. Why did you feel the need to ask me? You could have made an assumption. And guys, this is a big nugget. Hey, guys, you know what? I have spent so much time on Clubhouse. I don't want to hear anybody's voice anymore. If you're like me, I just want to hear my Zen music and zone out. But I've got dogs and kids and Clubhouse. Oh, screw it. You know what? Check these iPads out. Noise canceling, you put them in, the world goes away, and for just 20 minutes a day, I am floating on a cloud. You want my iPods or, or, her, uh, or hers? No. What did I do different from you? I just made them want it. Yeah. You were busy telling me about it. There's a huge difference. Yeah. You're good, Forbes. This is why I look up to you. It's amazing. This is why I'm the queen of pitch. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, and, by the I, way, I, and so, by I, the way, companies, you know, so one, I can get you guys to craft your, and I'm, I make people better pitchers, but it's one reason I spent most of my career in Fortune 500, 100 companies just teaching their sales team how to engage, excite, and enroll people in a much better level. I mean, we've made massive millions on sales teams than they have ever done. And I'm not interested in the closing part, the technique of sales. All I do is I engage people so that they just want what we have, whatever it is. Okay, next question, go. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I had all these questions and we haven't answered any of them, but I have to ask you a little bit, a bit of personal questions just because I wanna learn from you in terms of like your daily habits and what motivates you. So I know you talk about the importance of having habits that you don't think about that are good for your routine. Okay, now before you say that, I do, I'm so nuts about habits that I just invested in a company, called, it's a book company called OneHabit.com. We've just produced our first three books in the first three months of being in business. One of our books has 150 authors and it's 820 pages. Wait, did you just say you did three books in three months? Yes, I did. If you want to become a best-selling author right now, no joke, y'all had to pivot and go back to your home office, watch this. Go to onehabit.com slash home office. And in 40 minutes, for about a couple hundred bucks, you can be becoming a best-seller author and being in a book with me, celebrities, and other people, and literally leveling up everything. Okay? What? Yeah, I could, yeah, we're calling it the one habit movement. And so I've got one habits from amazing superstars like NFL Joe Theismann, Chuck Liddell, MMA fighters. It, this is the most amazing book if you haven't taken a look at it. And then my partner, my publisher created a system so that in about 40 minutes, you get your chapter done. Boy. And it's crazy. we ask you the right questions. And before you know it, it's part of a movement. So you're going to ask me about my, I need like five more minutes, okay? My, my, my business partner is like, oh, we have a meeting at four. Oh, we do. Oh, okay. So in three minutes, I do have to go. Uh oh That's why I have an amazing business partner. And you want to hear something about her? She's, yeah. 17, she's 17 years old. Come here. Come. Not 17. Oh, you're 18. I'm sorry. You had a birthday during. Oh, come here. Come sit for a second. Oh, Say hi to everybody. Something? Oh, hi. So hi. Ask McKenna a question about business or, or mom or whatever you want to ask her. What gets you excited about life? Traveling. I can't wait to travel the world and just work from my computer. That's awesome. I well, give, a little in okay, give a little insight into who you are. You're not a typical 18 year old. You haven't graduated high school yet, have you? No, I am in my last semester of high school. How much money did you earn the last five months of 
2020 when everybody quite a bit we've had a great last couple of six months i'm sorry i'm clubhouse i have terrible energy right now it's been quite a long day it's been i stay up all night um running a business is not easy anybody who says it is is lying to you to try to get you to start a business because they're probably trying to charge you to teach you how to run a business you run a six-figure business same yes yeah we how do about old, six wait, figures a month how old are you I'm 18 and I have a beautiful mom who <laughs> makes the whole front side of the business a lot easier, but that's where her part of the business stops and I begin. What would you say to people who are entrepreneurs? Oh my God. Um, make sure you really want to do this because it is a lot of work, um, but it is extremely worth it. I see my friends who are like, I have to go to work. I have to, I have work at three. And whenever I hang out with them, they're always complaining about their jobs, how much they hate their jobs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um, I'm so sorry. That <laughs> sounds awful. Um, so I would say if you want to live a free lifestyle, and I say that with quotations because I work 18 hours a day, but I will say after working 18 hours a day for nine months, that's when you live the four hour work week, but you do have to put in a couple years of your life to really get this going and sacrifice your social life and sacrifice going out and doing crazy things like there's no, nothing wrong with that, but you can't do that every night. A lot of my friends go out every single night after work and I just can't do that because I wake up and start working and work all the way till right before I go to bed. But you also took two, you also could afford to do what? You could also tell Greg, we were two minutes late. You could also afford to take you and your brother to where? Uh, we went to El Salvador on a surf trip which was awesome for a week. And those are some of the perks of being an entrepreneur. Of I didn't have to ask anybody for time off. Yeah. And I was still able to work when I was in El Salvador. And that is actually the beauty of employees because I would just be like, hey, I need to, you to get this done, get this done, get this done. And it was as if I was working and emailing people, but I was on vacation. But again, that took me that took me about three or four months. We started the business. That took, me, that took me four months of working 18 hour days to get to that point of being able to go on a vacation. And I know that sounds not like a lot of time. That's just because we accelerated at a really fast pace. Like in our first month of business, our first day of business, we did five figures. Will you, so, will you tell, yeah, actually in one, in one webinar, she personally launched a product and grow $16,000 in about 58 minutes. Wow. You want, you want to hang out with somebody who can do this at 18. Wow. Um, there was a question in one of my rooms about, are you born an entrepreneur or can you make yourself an entrepreneur? You make yourself an entrepreneur. Really? Yes. So yeah. No, you're not born an entrepreneur. I was not born an entrepreneur. Well, but you have a twin brother who's not doing what you're doing. No, he would. It, it says nothing about when you're born. It's about who you associate yourself with. Something that I learned in psychology is that all the opinions you've made in your life, like the reason you think the way you think is because of everything that's happened to this point, like even stuff you can't remember, mm -hmm. it's based on how you just you processed everything and everybody processes it different, which is why everybody's thought process is different. And so just depending on what happened in your life can dictate if you're an entrepreneur. And then it's also about how frustrated can an individual get and how uncomfortable can somebody get before they get pushed into being an entrepreneur. Interesting. Now I know we've got a four o'clock meeting with Greg. I just want to wrap all this up, but Joe Ingram he popped into my room on clubhouse <laughs> and he's not well, but he's a pretty, he's got sales over 300 millions in product sales. And we've never really, I don't know if we've actually really talked Joe, do you want to pop in for a second and just give some? Oh, there you are. Oh, there. <laughs> um, but I can hear you on Clubhouse. Wait, uh, wait a second. I'm gonna make your, your voice louder. So say hi. Oh, turn Siri off. Joe, can you hear me? Oh, I, I pressed the wrong button. I, I get my. my... I actually met with Bob Dinell on a live stream. That's how we got introduced a while back. I was the four-year-old with a balloon. And oh my god Canada. you oh yeah. really were you in uh, in idaho with us no i was uh he was live when you we did it on uh his next level call so oh my gosh I'm in sunny california yes <laughs> that so what do you think of this conversation you've been very patient and hanging out in a clubhouse <laughs> listen it's obviously now you're watching on facebook as well <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, again, I absolutely love it. And I, I pulled people up and I was like, okay, guys, everybody stay quiet. We're listening to Forbes and Michelle go back and forth. Michelle and I are friends as well. And I'm like, this is amazing. And your daughter, of course, is amazing. We did the yeah. summit last year. 
year together, the Los Angeles Tribune Summit. And so, and your daughter was there kicking butt when she just started the business as well. And I think it's phenomenal if you look at what you're saying to say mental health and what it is that you can overcome because you decide to. And the example that you've given for your daughter to come up and say, age doesn't matter. It's all about everything I want to do. And that's the, that again, just to check things off and say, I want to be accomplished. I want to do this. And this is amazing. So kudos to you, Forbes, Michelle, great conversation. And uh, it's just fantastic that we're sharing it with everybody. Hey, Michelle, this is your interview of us. So why don't you close it down with just one or two more questions and, uh, and then we'll go back and take our next meeting. Amazing. What motivates you aside from love, Forbes? What motivates you every day aside from your daughter and your and your love? Do you need anything else? Well, uh, yeah. Okay. So you know what motivates me? What motivates me is the game. I am living a life that I always dreamed I could be living. I just watched this in the movies. I was an outsider my entire life. And I thought everyone had it better or more fun. I wanted to be James Bond. I wanted to live every day like I like adventurous. I am now doing that. And I want to keep waking up every day. And I, just, I don't want to stop. My mentor is Jack LaLanne. We were at his home on his 96th birthday. McKenna and Riker witnessed this in a wheelchair, pretty much dying because he had a horrible bug for he got from pneumonia every day, sitting outside for 20 minutes in the sun, juicing. I mean, this man was now not given up. There's no such thing as retire. Mm. And that's, you get that. In, and now beautiful Elaine is 95. Why does she keep going? Because that's what it is. You get the gift of life, freaking enjoy it every day. Kenny, why do you do what you do? Because my goal in life is to make my mom happy. That's pretty much why I do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, that's that comes out of, of her watching me be sad for a lot of my life because I didn't, I thought I wanted things that I wasn't getting for whatever reason. And when she became a certain age, my life got better. Since she's been about eight years old, my best friend traveled with me around the world. And she still sees that I struggle, that people have screwed me over, that I lead with my heart. I haven't had a lot of systems. And she's like, mom, I know how to do the things that you don't know how to do. And that is the perfect partnership. Yay. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you so much, Forbes, for giving us your time. I'm so humbled and honored that you would share me as well. So thank you for giving us all of your wisdom. And uh, it was so nice to meet your beautiful daughter. Well, here's the thing. We are in this together and not a joke. From Joe, everybody in my clubhouse, I want to say thank you. I will end the room because I do have to take a meeting and move my business forward. Uh, I'm going to open, I open up spontaneous rooms every Monday at 10 a.m. I've been here very faithfully. Guys, please join me on Sunday at one o'clock Eastern, WWW Forbes Riley Live, the biggest speaking gig I've ever gotten. I am, I'm doing this one for all of us. Let me tell you something. This happened because of Clubhouse and because I've spent a life waiting to get to these moments and I wanna share it because it's not about me. Thank you so much. Bye guys. I love you guys. We love you. Thank you, thank you. Tanique, my friends and Des, people I've not met, please reach out to me from DM and I'll tell you what I'm doing in next.